Hi all, I have an amazing Bobby Fischer game to show you against another world chess champion Max Erwer. So this was played in the Leipzig Olympiad of 1960. The game kicked off with Fischer playing white playing e4. We have the Karakhan defense, d4, d5, white took on d5, the exchange variation. And this goes into the Panov Botvinnik attack. So knight f3, bishop g4, white took on d5. Knight takes and now queen b3, a very sharp move, hitting d5 and b7. Bishop takes f3, protecting d5 as well as shattering white's pawns. Now here, knight takes d4, just loses to bishop b5 check. That's a trap to avoid. That's just losing a piece. White can actually take with either queen or knight here, even the knight because of knight c7. That's winning a piece for white. So black. Uh, here played e6 we have queen takes b7 knight takes d4 bishop b5 check knight takes and now not queen b5 check which would allow queen d7 but actually the more precise looking well the more precise in fact queen c6 check keeping an eye on a8 so if queen d7 we can take on a8 this forces the king to move now we have queen takes b5 Perhaps here black should play queen d7 and this should be roughly even. This sort of position, this end game should be roughly even. In the game we see actually knight takes c3. Now after b takes c3 white might actually technically have a small advantage here on yeah after queen d7. We have rook b1. White has a small advantage even though the pawn structure is being kind of more isolated pawns here that b file makes a big difference rook d8 threatening a mating one with queen d1 now white didn't routinely castle here fisher played actually bishop e3 keeping the king in the center parrying queen d1 with the rook and after the queen takes b5 rook takes we see actually this king in the center left there with king e2 so white now yeah can use that b farm potentially this is a good target pawn we have f6 and now rook d1 with an immediate threat of bishop c5 check uh, just to show that uh, here just the token move just to show bishop c5 check bishop takes is crushing it's either winning a rook here because here there's check then there's a check here on d7 picking up the rook or uh, this position bishop takes there's an intermediary move bishop takes g7 this is winning for white leaving white a bishop up so yeah this is a very dangerous move uh, rook d1 very dangerous with the threat of bishop c5 so black took on d1 you might think well is the advantage that great well after king d7 we don't have bishop takes a7 but rather the pin rook b8 there's another little finesse not letting the black pieces out so easily and there's the immediate threat of bishop c5 here uh, also uh, if white had played rook here for example this position is going to be difficult for white to win even though white technically might be better so rook b8 a great little finesse uh, we have king c6 and now uh, the pawn yeah white's threatening bishop c5 so black parried that but now white takes that a7 pawn so a dangerous pass pawn is emerging here outside pass pawn we have g5 with the idea of bishop g7 to unpin a4 bishop g7 check Fisher is keeping the rook on rook b7 keeping black's pieces at bay if the bishop tries to get out you know avoid a pin self pin here yeah, there's bishop d4 and this is just awkward for black this configuration here this is just very nice because the rook on seven is hitting h7 and this pawn is ready to roll so for example like this this is just much better and there's another pin there as well to torture black 
So bishop h6 doesn't really help matters if that was played. So the bishop has to go back and back into that pin. But uh, now, what to do here? Well, we have a change now. Rook b5 check. No repetition. Rook b6. King d5. Now a5. f5. Bishop b8. So the pawn is only a few steps away. Rook c8. Can black do something either about the pawn or try and create some other threats to balance that very dangerous looking pawn now only two steps away. But we have rook takes c3 here. And this is very interesting. It might be what would you play in this position, in fact, after rook takes c3. There's actually a crushing move available in this position. This might be one of the the only inaccuracies in Fisher's play here. It seems that rook d6 check is the most crushing move. For example, here, rook d7 hitting the bishop. Bishop moves. a7. After rook, d, rook a3 trying to stop the pawn, there's bishop d6 check. So that's absolutely winning for white. So yeah, rook d6 check seems more accurate. In the game continuation, we have rook b5 check. Now this is very interesting. Which way for the king to go? In fact, the king stepped forward with very good ideas, actually. If king c6, there is uh, an idea here that, yeah, white has to play super accurately here, not just uh, any old move. What would you play in this variation? The king stepped here in the game, but if the king had gone here, how would you play this with white? If I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, not a7, because rook a3, and that would be fine for black. Um, rook a5 is the move to keep advantage. And here, if bishop d4, this is another interesting variation. What would you play here? If I give you five seconds. Okay, you really want to push a7, but not bishop e5, because there would be rook c5 in this position. That's setting a little trap, which I think both players noted after the game. <laughs> and Fisher was horrified by this. <laughs> but on further inspection, King e2, yeah, just king e2 here. And uh, this this is uh, winning for white. Uh, so, yeah, it's king c6 has some interest to it, basically. But the king went to c4. We have rook b7, another very precise move here. In fact, this is, this is real high precision uh, stuff. Um, if rook a5 had been played here, black, believe it or not, can salvage the situation. Can you see what black could play in this position? If I give you five seconds. It looks terrible because of that pawn. Black to play here. Rook b3, apparently this, this draws because a7... The idea is king d3, threatening mate. And if king c1, bishop b2 check, believe it or not, bishop c3 is equal. So, for example, king a2, check, and the king's not really uh, escaping the checks here. If the king did want to try and escape the checks, um, well, well, in fact, we have this check here, and... Now rook takes a5 check, picks up the queen. If the king wants to escape the checks with king b5, that is. Otherwise, it's perpetual check. Uh, so, in the game, um, 
we have actually uh, so that's why that would be a mistake we have rook b7 which is a super precise move bishop d4 and now in this position can you see what Fisher played if I give you five seconds starting from now okay check he took on c3 king takes to keep an eye on a7 but now the crunch idea the crunch idea here now is okay white play if i give you five seconds starting from now Okay, the crunch idea is bishop e5, pinning that bishop. So now a7 is unstoppable. A fantastic endgame precision example from Fisher. Fantastic. This is an absolutely crushing final blow. Yeah, if bishop takes, we have a7. There's nothing stopping the queening. So a brilliant game by Fisher, playing against Max Oa in 1960. Okay, hope you got something from that. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.